Oh, hello there. So I'm going to do a quick little demo video about uh, controlling line value in pencil media. So I've done like a video before about line weight, which I'll put in the uh, a link in the info in the corner. Um, and that's about when you would use a thicker thin line in terms of the logic, be it uh, to be thinner, where there's a light source and generally thicker in shadow on the back of a contour shape facing that way. Um, or the concept of thin or even a break in line where the bone is close to the surface. And thicker where the muscle or meat or fat is more present. This was like a so I this may be apocryphal, but this was told to me as being a, a classical rule of thumb. So Some people also do it more like um, it'll be more enhanced if you have a silhouette with extreme curves. You can use it to enhance the curve put more swish into the line. And this is in line with Matisse's notion of force, that a thickness is energy outwards in the gesture of a line. That a line, he'll build his lines up like that with multiple strokes and puts the, the emphasis in the apex. And that's a, a pretty sound uh, design principle for another kind of rule of thumb for why you might do thick and thin or what you're using it for to enhance that curvature. Um, that said, I've also seen situations where the inversion works equally well, but it does have a different feel, like the force is stretching it. Um, so these are all pretty viable, and I teach them uh, in my art class, uh, and along with the idea that just farther away is thinner lines. So the line scales with distance, and that helps as well because with small drawings, when you have a tiny figure, if you're trying to put thick lines on it, they just become a blob. But keeping the lines thinner and elegant allows them to remain uh, legible. So that's another factor. Um, and in general, you want to work on developing. So there's a pattern exercise I teach, which is just feathering, and you can do it with a pencil. And what I'm doing right now for these strokes, these are about an inch and a bit, I'm using primarily my wrist, a very isolated mechanical movement. And then there's just a slight shifting or pumping, I could refer to it, uh, that I do kind of unconsciously to counter for the fact if you just move your wrist, you get a curve. So there is, I come in. It's been uh, taken a lot of practice to get to the point where the action has become unconscious. I'm not really aware of the compensation motion anymore. At the beginning, it will be more awkward. Um, but eventually you can train your hand to do it unconsciously. It's a, a very good comparison is there's a great neuro neurological explainer documentary video clip thingy. From, it's a great from a documentary the BBC had out. A neurologist goes and does cup stacking with a kid who's a champion, and the kid could just do it so fast. And they have uh, EEG rigs on their, their heads, and his brain is quiet. 
it's not having to work because it's it's figured out the pathways to do this task when the the neurologist the or neuroscientist uh who's the host um he does it and he's slow and he's never done this before and it's clumsy and his brain's just lighting up like a christmas tree because it's still figuring out how to do this so it's trying everything and that's when you practice and you begin you're going to feel frustration that is to be expected the you want to learn to kind of breathe through it let it go remember that this is just drawing no one's life is depending on it unless you're concerned about trying to make a living as an artist and then it's your future success but what you're depending on is your ability to let go of anxiety a little bit here make a conscious release of the stress and focus on what's the task how do i get my hand to move smoother well i just want to simplify the mechanical motion and at first if i just move my wrist i get a pretty good line but it's a bit of always has a bit of an arc to it and that can be very handy if you want and i really do actually like i probably do this more often than that In, this, in the in the way I work for the style of drawing I do, and you see where there is some overlap. You, you that's where you want to locate your next ba batch for the crosshatch, and then the effect is smoother and more massed. Um, but for all this to work, you want to make sure you are not not drawing heavy-handedly. You want to control and be heavy when you want to to get these nice controlled feathers. And you want to work on the harder thing to expedite the the refinement of the motor skill. So the harder thing is doing nice inch to two inch lines. Depends on the size of your arm and hand, really, which is more comfortable. And you want to feather them. You want a nice taper in and out. Later on, if, once you feel like you're nailing that, work on starting you know, takeoffs and controlling, getting a nice even line, and landings. Just isolating either end of the stroke. And you want to work on that regularity. You know, it's not perfect, but you want a very even spacing. And that's about, again, you're isolating your movements, so most of the stroke is my wrist my wrist S the compensation for the curve is a, sm a small adjustment going from out to in as the line pulls towards my hand and that can be adjusted like if I'm doing this it's a more dramatic if you want to do strokes down uh, but they're harder to get straight so what I generally do is this is the most at comfortable position for my arm this is the most accom uh, accommodating angle so rotate the paper when you want to do the other angle you'll get better results you can do it this way but because it's more mechanically more complex with so many more jo uh, joints controlling it there's more opportunities for like I, I, I just even just trying nice waiver and by contrast when I have a complex form that's on this side that I want to do that that's when that kind of control it's useful so small movements that's what your fingers uh, are really good at your wrist shoulder and elbow are really good for your XY axis control the big movements and your fingers are good for the small motor control and then you want to work on building lines so starting super light this is a, a black wing so it's very soft So maybe do some big faux feathered lines, build them up. They're feathered, but they're faux in the sense that it's not a single stroke. And also try different hardnesses. This is an, a 2H. The black, the Palomino black wing is a, a soft lead. This is a hard sharp lead so it's great for really fine controlled lines and I do a lot of roughing with a hard line and I can still get some control whoop I have to sharpen this one has snapped I 
a really nice desk side mounted exacto rotary sharpener which i'm quite pleased i found one for cheap so when you rush i was trying to generate these you'll see little fat bits if you enlarge them what you're going to see actually is a little check mark or that sort of thing and that's when you go too fast and don't lift you get this hmm, little bump you can use that if you're trying to create you know edges so it's not like it's something you never want but you also the feathering stroke that's learning to lift at the end and getting that soft ends on both sides um that takes a bit more pressure to generate a line but it's also really good for shading smooth the granularity of the texture the shading creates is very even so i prefer shading with the hard pencils if you want to get rid of any stroke motion scumble is a shading technique that i was taught I don't know when. Long time ago. So I'm doing some strokes, but I'm also evening and smoothing with rotational movements. And it's good for the big areas. You'll still need to go in and do strokes for the definition. Nice thing with hard pencil. And then this is the, the black color erase pencils. I like sketching with them as well. So they're a hard pencil crayon. Very compatible with graphite, slightly different value for the shading, a little darker. Good to mix them up. Use them both, I find. A little more texture definition. If you do the side shading with a soft pencil, generally what you're going to get is a little more visible grit. A more contrast in the grit. Plus, it's going to smudge more. So if you want to do smudge smoothing and like get airbrushy effects, the Palominos are going to be your friend. Uh, a, a rub stick would be good for that, but I, I use my fingers frequently. Um, and then when you're restating a line to build a line up, uh, just make sure that like you're being careful about the crafting of the line. You don't, unless you really want to intentionally make a bar, a deadline in the fat sense. So a deadline is a line that ends and begins with the same weight, sometimes even a bit of a dot from the stopping, right? Um, and a feathered line is the thing I'm, I'm emphasizing here. Practice your feathered line. Deadlines useful. There are opportunities and styles in which drawing that's, that is valuable but it's also the easier thing you don't need to practice that so much um, what you need to do is practice the finesse and the control so there you go I recorded this hopefully it's not too long yeah there we go uh, for some current dynamic drawing students at sin studio um, we're going to be doing making comics next semester so if you want to check out the sin studio sin studio.ca you could sign up from anywhere because we're doing it online on zoom Maybe I'll see you there. And for my students in dynamic drawing this semester, I hope this is helpful. All right. <laughs>